So, let us do this uh, calculation before before we do this calculation ok there is this, this nice concept called bitrate distance product. So, let us say I have a bitrate which is for example, let us take 100 Mbps 100 megabits per second that is my bitrate. What is the bit slot corresponding to this? Duration of the bit 1 by 100 0 0.01 microseconds, so which is 10 nanoseconds. So, bit slot is 10 nanoseconds. In a very simplistic way, we can demand that the spread should not be greater than the slot duration. The delta t after it propagates through the fiber, the spread initially let us say I had my pulse which was looking like uh, for instance this. After spreading, I should not allow it to spread more than the slot duration. If it spreads more than the slot duration, what happens? It will start interfering with the next symbol and so you have inter symbol interference. Okay. So, you do not want to spread beyond a bit slot. So, but I now can exactly calculate what that is. So, my delta t which is my spread should be less than the bit slot and I know the bit slot is 1 over bit rate. Okay. So, I am going to substitute for this delta t can you just substitute delta t what was delta t n 1 square by n 2 l over c delta. So, this relation gives me that bit rate times delta must be less than 1 which means bit rate times this is my delta sorry delta t this must be less than 1 which means that for a system designer the useful relation is bit rate distance product b l it must be less than n 2 c divided by n 1 square delta. So, I pick a fiber which has a specific n 1 and n 2 which means a specific delta that defines my bit rate distance product. Let us do a calculation. Let us take a fiber n 1 is 1 1.5 n 2 is 1 and uh, what is this product now? Can you calculate this bit rate distance product? So, this is 1 divided by 1.5 square c over the delta is n 1 minus n 2 by n 1 which is 0 0.5 by 1.5 which is four into ten power eight. What's the unit? Bit rate, bits per second, distance meter. So I can write it as four hundred. megabits per second meter which is 0.4 megabits per second kilometer. What does this mean for a design engineer? You are if you are designing a communication system this is the number that you want to look for now. You know uh, it is it is not always this it is you should not design you not you should not over specify your system. The sense that when you are trying to design a link between point A and point B there are certain set of information you need to first have before designing the link. So, we have started getting into this idea of link design now. Okay. So, the first information you want to have is what is the distance. Okay. 
before deciding what fiber to choose, what laser to choose or what source to choose, should I choose an LED, should I choose a laser, should I choose a, a you know, multi-mode fiber, should I choose a single mode fiber, you know, plastic fibers. Of course, today glass fibers are more cheaper, but you probably could make plastic fibers depending on, you know, how the source is, you could probably get a plastic fiber. I mean, you should, so you, these are the questions that you should start asking. So let us say my requirement is, you know, a link between, uh, you know, the top floor of my building to the bottom floor of my building and I do not think I will go anywhere, let us say, beyond 100 meter, okay. What is the best bit rate I will get from this system? If I have 100 meter, I will get 4 Mbps. 1 kilometer, 1000 meters gave me 0 0.4, 100 meters will give me 4 Mbps. If my requirement is only 1 Mbps, I can very well use this system. But if I want to do uh, the same 1 Mbps for, I want to now set up a link which is 1 kilometer long, it is not going to work out. So, a designer will always optimize the performance. You do not have to go to a high end uh, design or you, you, you should not over specify, right? you should not uh, look for a design which will work for gigabits per second when your requirement is only megabits per second, a requirement of only 100 Mbps. But why would I choose a, a LED which will work at 200, uh, 200 uh, megahertz bandwidth, I do not need that. If I have a choice between two, I will look at several aspects before deciding what should be my optimal choice and one of the aspects now it turns out to be it is dispersion now, okay. Uh, Let us say we want to improve this, we want to improve this bitrate distance product, what is your first strategy? Now you are a fiber designer let us say, okay. So N2 equal to 1 would mean cladding index is 1 which means that cladding is air, you just take a piece of plastic with refractive window or glass, just take a piece of glass, that is what, uh, so if I just take a piece of glass and interestingly it is not depending on the core uh, diameter, I can just take a cylinder of glass and I can transmit 0.4 Mbps in 1 kilometer, that is what this means. It can support any number of modes, arbitrarily large number of modes, but this is what, it is not depending on the diameter of the uh, core, it is depending only the contrast of refractive index and that is intuitive to understand because it depends only on the angle of launch. Angle of launch or numerical aperture never dependent on the uh, diameter of the fiber. How do you, what is your first strategy to improve this uh, information carrying capacity of this fiber? Increase N2. What happens when you increase N2? Okay, work it out you made N2 as 1.485, uh, give me in the same unit, megabits per second kilometer, okay. So, I have to recheck this, you are saying it is 13.4 Mbps kilometer, can somebody confirm if this is correct? <laughs> so, this is just uh, 1.485, sorry 198, 19.8 Mbps kilometer. Okay. So, when you added a cladding which is of a uh, higher refractive index, your bitrate distance product increased. This is one reason why we need cladding. Why cannot I just have a core that also satisfies a condition for so total internal reflection? There is one reason for adding a cladding and cladding of specific refractive index is to increase your bitrate distance product. Of course, there are other uh, reasons for that. but this is one reason. So, 
So, this is about uh, multimode fibers. Remember the source line width did not matter here. We should now be able to consider the source line width. Okay. And when there is a source line width what happens? In addition to this delay the different wavelengths propagate with different speeds and so uh, we will talk about the uh, difference in arrival times of the different wavelengths and so you have a dispersion. Uh, one way to solve this intermodal dispersion is by using greater index fibers. Uh, by the way, when we did this intermodal dispersion, we considered two extreme cases. One case where the uh, ray propagated this way and the other case, I am sorry. The other case where we said there is a ray path like this and we compared the propagation time of these two. But there could, could be rays which are you know meridional rays which are not crossing the core or the, the skew rays they are called as a skew rays they do not cross the core. What can happen is they get guided from the surface and then so I mean I cannot show it in the 2D here it is more like in a, in a third dimension. Uh, you will have a uh, reflection here and then it can get guided along the surface without crossing the uh, core. So, we did not consider those skew rays, but the skew rays will anyway uh, take a shorter path. So, this is still the best estimate. Now, in a graded index fiber what you do is instead of having the core with a specific index n 1 and a cladding with specific index n 2, you provide a gradation in refractive index and that gradation is decided by n 1 times 1 minus delta r by a to the power q, where q is a parameter that can be changed. Okay. Now, if it is a parabolic index profile, you say that this q is equal to 2 because this is approximated now with a parabola, which means at r equal to 0 you have n 1 and r is equal to a you have 1 minus delta. So, the uh, refractive index profile of a graded index fiber is going to look like this. For r equal to 0 you have n 1 and r is equal to a you have 1 minus delta and r greater than a you have n 1 times n 1 into uh, 1 minus delta. Like this. this is how the profile looks like. Now, whether this profile is parabolic in nature or whether it is triangular in nature or one extreme is of course, the step index uh, fiber that is decided by your q. So, why is graded index uh, fiber helping you to avoid the uh, intermodal dispersion. So, this is like how a graded index fiber is looking like I mean I am trying to give a visual picture of this. So, the central part which is uh, so, so somewhere you have the bound boundary is not visible this is the core and this is the clad and here the color gradation of color is actually representing the gradation of refractive index. So, it simply means that you will have total internal reflection let us say light is getting launched at this angle it is experiencing total internal reflection everywhere because at every path differential path what it sees is a lower refractive index right. So, it will it will kind of do this it will do a curly path inside the fiber. And if you launch light at this angle for instance, it is going to take for example, this path this may not be to scale, but this light is propagating mostly to through lower index me medium whereas, this one is propagating through 
higher index and the one which is propagating through higher index is shorter path and so you kind of achieve same path for the shorter uh, the one which is taking the shorter path and one which is taking uh, you achieve the same uh, speed for uh, the light that is taking the shorter path and the light that is taking the longer path. You can do detailed mathematics of actually tracing the ray path for all of this. It is not a straight line path, it will be a uh, it will be a shape decided by the refractive index profile. But it turns out that uh, okay, so the shortest path is traveling slower and the longest path will travel faster because of the lower refractive index. It turns out that if it is parabolic, it will have minimum dispersion. If this q number is equal to 2, you can mathematically prove that the dispersion is minimum. Dispersion is the difference between the shortest path and longest path that is minimum. You still cannot equalize the paths, it is not that you will reach a zero dispersion condition. Uh, the, the intermodal delay is minimum when you have q is equal to 2, but you still have an intermodal delay and because you still have that intermodal delay. Uh, which is corresponding to delta t, the bitrate distance product is limited even in a greater index fiber. So, you asked a question earlier, why do you need greater index fiber? I need greater index fiber to minimize my dispersion, uh, but why am I not using that in long distance communication? It still cannot get rid of intermodal dispersion, you still have intermodal dispersion. So, you move on to step index fiber for long distance communication. Okay? And uh, because the volumes are less, I mean for short distance maybe greater index fiber is fine, but the number of the kilometers of fiber that is required for short distance at least until recently is very small. So, because the volumes are less production is production cost is uh, production cost per meter of fiber will be more and so people just adapted step index fiber for all the applications. Okay. So, we stop here.